Every year, Midsummer Scream takes place at the Long Beach Convention Center, and they wow us with updates about our favorite haunt events and different Halloween fun, including a hundred different vendors and more, while also bringing us some haunt fun in the middle of summer with their Hall of Shadows themed area filled with monsters and goblins and of course many haunted houses. What's going on everybody and welcome back to Exploring Attractions. My name is Scott and you're watching your stop for all things theme park and attraction related. If you guys are new here, make sure you're subscribed with those bell notifications on. If you want to watch a video like the one that you're watching right now, and of course check us out on social media on Instagram and on Twitter at Exploring Attractions to keep up to date with the latest and greatest theme park news. In today's video, I want to give you guys a complete survival guide to Midsummer Scream 2022 at the Long Beach Convention center now we all know with the world and how it was working the past couple years midsummer scream did not take place however last year in 2021 awaken the spirits housed at the pasadena convention center was something to give the fans a little bit of taste for midsummer scream preparing to return this year but now we have a full-scale halloween convention and we are super excited and thrilled to not only be talking about it but be attending it within the next couple weeks or so and of course we'll have tons of coverage from the day or the weekend of the convention as Midsummer Scream is having us out once again. Huge shout out to them. So we'll be there covering everything for you guys, getting interviews with John Murdy from Halloween Horror Nights and interviews with all the different people in the horror world. And we cannot wait. So make sure, like I said, that you're subscribed for that. All right, everybody, but I'm going to tell you the best way, in my personal opinion, to get everything done at the convention, including the Hall of Shadows, the different panels that you want to watch, and even what tickets are best for you. Now, this event runs from Friday, July 29th until Sunday, July 31st. Friday actually kicks off in the evening from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., but that's only going to be for the show floor, so there's going to be no Hall of Shadows. On Saturday, the event runs from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., and on Sunday, it runs from 11 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now we do have a couple different ticket options for the entire week in general admission it's only $63 not bad at all Friday is priced at $32, Saturday priced at $47 being the most expensive day, and of course Sunday being at $37. That gets you access to all the different vendors, admission to the mini haunts, and first come first serve access to dozens of panels and presentations. Now those ticket options are good and whatnot if you're only going for one day, but might I recommend the best bang for your buck if you want to do everything, and let me tell you, it does require multiple days if you want to see absolutely everything and that means every vendor every mini haunt as many presentations and panels as you can get i will recommend the gold bat pass now it's a little bit higher in price it's 135 dollars but let me tell you what you get with it on saturday and sunday you get an hour early access at 10 a.m earlier than the 11 a.m opening you get priority access to all the panels and presentation front of the line access to select haunted attractions in the hall of shadows and then you get a collectible lanyard and credential on top of that you get a limited edition gold bat enamel pin and admission to midsummer screams after dark saturday night party that is the best bang for your buck right there like i said if you want to do everything you definitely should get the gold bat pass 135 dollars it is such an awesome value and i definitely recommend it 100 if you want to get everything done and if you're planning to visit multiple days to this convention all right everybody so you may be asking yourself which day is best to go obviously saturday is going to be the most busy day however if you go on sunday you may have a chance to hit some of the stuff a lot quicker than you would on Saturday. Now, if you have access to Friday, I definitely recommend going on Friday night to go check out all the vendors and whatnot, and then save Saturday for a full day of mini haunts and presentations. I think that'd be the best way to do it. Um, like I said, if you have access to Friday and Saturday, that'd be the best way to do it hands down. Now, if you have access to only one day, then I recommend number one, you get there an hour early regardless. Parking in the Long Beach Convention Center area can be very 
very, very hectic. And I'm telling you guys right now, the lines outside just to get into the convention center is very long, let alone parking. So you want to get there at least an hour early. If you don't mind waiting, I recommend getting there an hour and a half early to get the best parking spot because you don't want to be the person that's parking way down the way, two miles down the way, and be taking that long walk at the end of the night after you just had a great day but tiring day at Midsummer Scream to your parking space. So that is my number one recommendation is get there early because it gets jam packed. Now, really, Midsummer Scream, the way that you tackle this is all uh, based on your priorities, right? Because there's different panels and presentations that different people may want to watch. Some people may want to watch a Halloween Hornets panel. Some may want to watch the Greg Nicotero panel. It just it depends, really. So actually, this year, the creators of Midsummer Scream came out with a mobile app. And the mobile app is really, really useful. It gives you the full schedule. It gives you everything you need to know based on tickets and everything. The mobile app is the way to go to kind of guide you throughout your trip to Midsummer Scream this year and really what helps out a lot at least in my personal opinion because I like watching the panels and presentations a lot is that schedule section it gives you the date and you can pick which day you're going and it gives you the whole list of the panels and presentations in like an order of time so from the very beginning to the very end of the night so right now I'd recommend you download the Midsummer Scream app get familiar with it because that convention's coming up in a couple weeks it also lists all the different different haunts that you can expect and a couple different things that you need to know about them in the Hall of Shadows. So if you're looking for that as well and you're a big Hall of Shadows fan, then recommend checking that out as well. Now we already covered getting there early and that same goes for the panels and presentations. I'd get there at least 30 to 40 minutes early for the presentations. Now obviously if you're going to a big one like Halloween Horror Nights, the majority of people are going to be at that panel. There's tons of Halloween Horror Nights fans. So you want to get there at least an hour early guys. Especially Especially if you only have general admission, you want to get there an hour early because that one fills up. And if you don't mind having a seat in the back, then you don't need to get there as early. But if you want at least a good seat to where you can still see the stage and, and all the things that they're showing on the TVs, definitely recommend getting there extremely early because that one will fill up. And you kind of got to gauge um, based on all these presentations. Do you think these are going to be super popular depending on which one you go to? They'll all be popular, but obviously there's the different ones that all the fans will be interested who are at the convention. So really your best bet as far as panels and presentations goes is kind of gauge how popular it is. If it's in a smaller showroom, obviously it's not going to be as big as the ones that are in the grand ballroom. So you don't have to line up as early for those different panels that are going to have less of a crowd. I would say 30 minutes is a safe bet. I'm just kind of basing around my experience with watching these different smaller panels. But for these bigger panels in the grand ballroom, you're going to want to line up at least 40 minutes to an hour early. Now, like I said, it's all about part. So what I would start off with first as soon as you get inside to the event is head over to Hall of Shadows. Hall of Shadows is all the mini haunts, all the mini haunted houses. These lines also get very long. So in the morning you want to get as many mini haunts as you can possibly done. That's typically where everybody goes right away. So you're going to want to get all that stuff done. Once you're done with all of that, then that gives you plenty of time to kind of roam the vendor hall and you know shop till you drop, spend a bunch of money, see all the different cool signings that they have, autographs, all that fun stuff. Because as soon as you knock out all the haunted houses in the Hall of Shadows and you go and check out all the vendors for a couple hours or so, you have plenty of time to go back and do your favorite haunts in the Hall of Shadows. Typically what I do is after I do all the Hall of Shadows, after I do all the vendors and whatnot and walk around a little bit, I like to go outside because you can re-enter the convention as long as you have your ticket and wristband I'm pretty sure. I like to go outside to the Pike which is right next to the convention center in Long Beach and get some food there maybe at CPK or just the different restaurants that they have over there instead of buying food in the actual convention as it could get quite expensive in there. And Midsummer Scream doesn't control the price of the food, it's all based on the convention price pricing. Or if you don't mind walking a little bit, you can even walk down the street to a McDonald's and get even a cheaper food to where you don't have to spend as much money. And hell, maybe even if you're waiting for a presentation to start up and you've got everything done that you wanted to, at least in the morning time, then you can go get some lunch while you wait for that presentation, while, while you wait at least to get ready to line up for that presentation. So like I said, and I sound like a broken track record, but a big thing about this convention is having your priorities straight. What do you want to do the most? But like I said, this is just the best way that I've done the convention every single year, starting off with the Hall of Shadows, 
going into the vendors and then getting some lunch and going to do all my favorite things again for a second time after that, at least in, in times that have only gone for one day. Now, obviously, if you have access the whole weekend, it, it's a little bit easier. You don't have to be rushing as much and you can kind of just enjoy it a little bit more and go at your own pace. But if you do have one day, you got to prioritize it and, you know, schedule it a little bit better. And keep in mind, these are just my tips and tricks. There is no specific great way to do it. This is just all from my experience. So if you have any tips you want to share with everybody, let us know down below in the comments section so we can all kind of share our tips and tricks for uh, Midsummer Scream. The number one thing though is have fun. Have a spooky good time at this year's Halloween and horror convention because it's been a while since we got in a full scale Midsummer Scream and I am so excited to return to the Long Beach Convention Center. See everybody. Uh, see all these uh, unique Halloween costumes and just have a great time. So most importantly, have fun guys. Now if you have any specific questions I didn't answer in this video and you need answers to, drop them down below in the comments section as well. I'll try my best to answer them as much as possible. And yeah, like I said, uh, if you have any other tips and tricks, drop them down there as well. Uh, my name is Scott and you've been watching Exploring Attractions, Positivity is K. Make sure you're subscribed with those bell notifications on and most importantly, remember to keep exploring. Peace out, everybody.